Okay, now that you've started your books, we're going to look at what we put in, e in each book. The first thing I want to tell you is if you are returning for each member and you have books on your uh, record book screen from last year, I highly encourage you to archive those. You'll still be able to access them in the future, but that way your screen isn't all clogged up with books from years and years past, and you don't accidentally click in the wrong book to enter information. So to do an archive on your record book screen, go over here where these drop down arrow boxes are and click the, click one of them. I'm going to archive this dog record book. And so it'll ask me, are you sure you want to archive it? Yes, I do. And then if I say, oh, is that the same goals I had last year? I need to go look. You can do that by clicking up here on the top right where it says show archived. Just slide that little lever across and now all of your archived books are going to show up again. If you accidentally archived the wrong book, if you already have all your books started and you archived this year's book instead of last year's, you can unarchive it by clicking the archive button here. And now it will show back up on your other screen. But I'm going to leave that one archived for now. And I'm going to turn off up here on the top right. I'm going to turn off the show archive. Okay, you can also see that I have two involvement reports going right now. So I would um, need to archive one of them because your involvement report, which is what we're going to go through in this video, is your permanent information, your permanent 4-H information. So you need one per child and, uh, you know, your own involvement report, and you only have that one. You don't archive it and you don't start a new one every year. You add to the current one. So if we look, I believe I have this one already started. So if I go involvement report right here at the top, I click that name. You'll see it now has a solid gold box around it. And over here on the left in the menu, I have all different menu. These are the pages of that record book. So now I'm going to work in this uh, black box menu over here. I'm going to click project info where it says first year in 4-H. That is your first year of 4-H. So whether that, and that is when you turned eight, not your Cloverbud years. So your first year of competitive 4-H, whether that was 2015 or 2023. Um, and the, how you know what year it is, is the year you went to the fair. So you might have started your 4-H year on October 15th last year in 2022, but your first year in 4-H is the year you, you go to your first fair. So 2023 would be that year. And I'm going to click the green save button. And then 4-H club and project information. There's a couple of ways to um, record information here. And it depends on how your club or project meetings projects work. Um, so the I'm going to delete this for a second. Okay, don't use the delete button unless you really don't want that information anymore, because once it's deleted, it can't come back. Okay. <laughs> um, so this green info button, we're going to add it in the involvement report. This is the only place we do this. We always use January 1st of the year of fair. Okay. So 01, 01, 2023. And we do that because the, this particular document only prints the last four digits of the year. It only prints the year. And so I don't want uh, you to accidentally have information showing in the wrong year. So in the involvement report for every date, it's 0101 of the year of fair. Okay. Then your club name. This is where you can put different, you might be putting different things in here. Okay. If you are part of a club that only has one project, like Happy Hoofers only has a horse project, or Dead Eye Archery only has the archery project, then you're gonna type the club name and a hyphen and the project name, okay? Like that. And then right now, we don't know how many meetings they're gonna have between here and fair. So we're gonna leave it blank right now, but right before we print this to bring to fair, we will go in and fill in this information. Um, and same thing about number of meetings attended. We don't know how many we'll be able to make between now and August. So we'll click save. And then that shows up there. Now, when we are, before we print this or submit it, then we're going to go back in to the edit button 
and we would put in how many meetings it is and how many we attended, okay, and click save. Now that's for a project or a club where the club is the project. Happy Hoofers only does horse projects. Uh, Dead Eye Archery only does archery projects, things like that. Now the next one, again, remember that date is 0101 of 23 this year. Let's say it's Animal House, okay? So I'm in the Animal House 4-H club and I'm taking a market rabbit, or sorry, a market goat and a rabbit pro pet rabbit project. So Animal House has club meetings and then they have project meetings. And so I'm gonna put this as our club meetings and I'm just gonna put Animal House and save it. And then I'm gonna go back in 01, 01, 2023. And I'm gonna say Animal House Market Goat Project, okay? And then I would say how many meetings that project had and how many of those I was able to attend, save. Now, Barnyard Brigade, if I understand correctly, they do uh, their club meeting and then they do different project meetings on the same day. So for that one, for each of those projects that I'm taking with Barnyard Brigade, I would have an entry like this. Okay, and let's say I was also doing Oops. Barnyard Brigade and, um, oops. Okay. So you can see that I'm going to both market swine and market beef projects. I could also have this one just be this. If those, all those happened at the same time, it could look like that. And then I wouldn't need this entry here. All right. But what I really am just trying to get you to understand is that I want the judges, your record book evaluators and myself want you to show the depth of your projects. How many did you take? How many hours did you put into this? So don't short yourself because when you get older in high school, in college, and you are applying for awards or jobs or scholarships, you want to be able to say how much you did throughout your 4-H career. And this is how we do it, by breaking it down to all the little little parts, okay? Same thing, um, uh, Lakeside Leaders, you guys have multiple projects. So Lakeside Leaders has their club meetings. And then they also have, maybe one of you did um, art. Maybe they do art and quilting together. So art and quilting projects. And maybe you also did um, poultry with them. Okay. All right, so if we look at that, this is their club meetings where it's just club business and volunteering, um, planning their year, things like that. And then here is when we do our art and our quilting projects. If they are done at the same time at the same meetings, if they're not done at the same meetings, then they would be separate entries like this one is. Okay. All right. Same thing for Harrison uh, Livestock. Harrison Livestock is... Uh, your, maybe that's your organizational club. So we would put that. And then you're also doing the dog project with them. And then let's say uh, you're also in another club for a different project. Um, how about uh, High Country? And High Country, I'm not sure how they do their meetings, but I think they have organizational meetings. And then they also have uh, project meetings.
Okay. So if you were taking dog with Harrison Livestock, you would have organizational meetings associated with Harrison Livestock, as well as dog project meetings with them. And then if you happen to be in high country um, as well, then you would be in high country for their organizational meetings and their pet goat project meetings. So you might have several entries here, but that is good. That shows your involvement. The other thing about this project it, or this particular report, sorry, involvement report, is there can be no gaps. So if you had said that your first year in 4-H is 2020, but then you only have entries for 2023, your uh, record book evaluator is going to deduct points for you. So if you were in 4-H in 2020, then your date would be 01-01-2020. That was your first year. And let's say you did... Um, uh, cooking 101 with Harrison Livestock. Okay, and they had five meetings and I attended five of them. All right. And then now let's say we didn't do 4-H for a couple of years for whatever reason, right? That's totally acceptable and happens. And you can see now there's a gap because I have 2020 and then my next entry isn't until 2023. I would lose points on this um, when it was evaluated. So the easiest way to fix that is just to put in an entry that says 2020, oops, 21. And it says none, zero and zero. Just to show that you didn't do 4-H that year. And then I would have to do the same thing again for 2022. Okay. So now you can see that I have a running entry from my first year in 4-H being 2020. I have an entry for 2020, 21, 22, and several for 23. All right, that page is done. Now we're gonna to move to leadership. And leadership is anything that you're building leadership skills with. So if you made a motion, if you seconded a motion, if you led a, pro, um, a committee, committee for planning your parade float or your community service project, um, and of course, always, if you've served as an ambassador or a, a club officer, those are things that go in here. And again, there cannot be any gaps. So right now, my project info says my first year of 4-H was 2020. So when I go to leadership, I need to have an entry for 2020. And the level would be whatever it might be. If you're an ambassador, that's a county project. If you serve on a steering committee for the district event or a state event, um, you maybe go, as you get older, you go to a national or a regional conference or event of some kind, you would put those in there. Most of you choose local or club level. And let's say in 2020, I was uh, in... Um, what club did I say I was in in 2020? I should remember this. Whoops. It was in Harrison Livestock. Okay. So let's go back here. Local club, Harrison Livestock. And that year I did the cooking project. And I was a member, made motions and voted on club business. Okay, write out what you did. Remember what you did because 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you won't remember what you did. But if you write it down today, you will save it. And then remember, I didn't do 4-H in 21 or 22. So I'm going to put that in here. And I can say you can pick any of those levels and just put none, none. And again in 22. This is why it's important to do this every year because you don't want to have to go back and remember all of this stuff and spend time entering this every time, every year, okay? It's also why we only make you or ask you to do it once. Um, okay, local or club, um, I had Harrison Livestock on there. And let's say for Harrison Livestock, I was, uh, for my dog project, helped younger 
members learn the basics of cleaning their jobs. Okay. Say. And then I also had on project info back here, I also had that I was in archery, an animal house, and lakeside leaders. So we need to put information in for those. Club, let's say for lakeside leaders. And if it's just a club wide thing like this, lakeside leaders, and I was the president. Okay, um, because this is for the whole club, not a specific project. This is for a specific project. And then in um for the other ones, let's say I had something for high country. Or I could say member um voted on business. And if you remember a specific vote or a specific motion you made, you can put that in there as well. So they would put something also in for um, Barnyard Brigade. And maybe with this one, I'm let's do something else. I'm going to say state. And I was... All right, so show the depth of what you've done and where you've been and what you have completed through 4-H so that you can show a future employer or a scholarship review committee um, how much you have learned over the years. Okay, the next tab over here on the left, the next page is community service. There are two spaces here. This first one, this top one is community service related to 4-H. So this 4-H uh, community service, you are supposed to provide at least one hour of service in the name of 4-H. Most of our clubs do activities. Our county does activities. And this one always comes up with invalid date when you start. So just delete it and go ahead and put your date in. Now, remember, my first year in 4-H was 2020, so I'm going to have to update that. And make sure that information is in here. Harrison Livestock, uh, decorated Easter eggs for the community egg hunt. okay number of hours maybe it is three this unit of time just leave it blank i don't it prints weird when you put information in it that is the only place you are allowed to leave blank okay and now i need to put in my information for 2021 2022. And remember to leave that unit of time blank. And I'm sorry, this always comes up in validate. I don't know why. Okay, so I was with Harrison Livestock and they decorate, I don't know for sure, but maybe they decorated Easter eggs again. Okay. And then this one, uh, maybe you came to a county program. So, uh, I happen to know that our ambassadors oops, did several that were community uh, service uh, projects this spring for uh, Valley Vista and Wounded Warriors.
All right. So now I have something for every year. Remember, again, something every year, 2020, 21, 22, and 23. And then community service outside of 4-H. This is if you did community service with school, the food bank, your church, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Rotary, um, whatever you might have done that does not have 4-H. Um, if you've never done anything with any of those organizations, that's okay. But just remember to don't leave a blank. The only thing we leave blank is the unit of time. So I'm going to put an entry for every year. Now let's say maybe this year I did do one. Okay, I'm gonna put one in there. Okay. All right. So that is community service. Make sure there's an entry for every year. We are good there. 2020, 21, 22, and 23. Now we're going to look at activities. And there's at least one activity that all of you should have. And that is your exhibit for whatever you're exhibiting your project. So whether you do it as a um, you know, a horse show that you didn't make the county horse show, but you went to another show and substituted the showmanship class for that, you would put that in here. Um, if you go to the fair, if you go to the junior show, or sorry, to the horse show, if you do a community, um, get approved to do it like a community event as your exhibition, um, maybe you're in launch club and you do a community event down there at the Cormana building, Whatever it is that that goes in here. If you went to a field day, a livestock field day or a sh clinic or any of those type of activities in the name of your 4-H project, whatever your project is, then you would put that information in here. So I'm going to say 2020. Um, whoops. 2020. And the level was county, and the name of the activity was Benoit County Fair. I displayed my project and received a man type. Sorry. Whatever you might write down there, whatever your cooking project is, you can write that out. Whatever you want that you learned, did, or achieved, you put in here. And the more information you put in here, the better. Okay, and then in 2021, 20, uh, I wasn't in 4-H, remember? So none, none. And in 2022, I wasn't in 4-H. And then in 2023, uh, maybe I went to a goat field day. And then, of course, I would also, it hasn't happened yet, but when it did, I would want to put in the fair.
whatever you want to put. This is just what I typed, but you can put whatever you want, but definitely put in some information in there, okay? All right, the next tab over here on the left, our next page is going to be promotions. Promotions is anytime you talk to someone about 4-H. Did you talk to a friend? Did you tell a grandparent about what you're doing in 4-H? Um, did, uh, did you sell cow patty bingo tickets? Did somebody see you wearing a 4-H t-shirt and ask, what is 4-H? What do you do in 4-H? Those are things that you would put in here, okay? So I'm gonna put 2020 um, that I did nothing. Okay, which is fine as long as you have an entry, right? And then of course in 21 and 22, I didn't have anything. So I'm definitely gonna put none for those because I wasn't in 4-H. Okay. But then in 23, I went with my club to do the summer concert to sell cow patty bingo tickets. Oh, I'm sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. So what was the outcome of it? That's, this line would actually go down here. Okay. And then maybe you did this one. Okay, so any of those kind of activities are what goes on promotion. All right, the next button is record book. And when we click that one, that is the end of our book. This is what's gonna look like when we print it. So I, want, I always scroll through and make sure it looks right. And this community service, this is why I tell you to leave that unit of time blank because then that screen doesn't even print and it doesn't look weird and wonky, okay? job. That looks great. Now, if I go back up to the top, I can download this so that it saves to my computer. I can save it to my computer. Or I can print it for my computer if I download it and or I can hit submit. If you hit submit, your uh, volunteer can see this as well as the extension office. And then if you need one of us to print it, um, we can do that for you. And we're happy to print any of your books for you uh, at no cost. So if you don't have a computer printer at home or you ran out of ink or whatever, um, please hit the submit button and then let us know that you need X number of copies of the involvement report for your projects. And we're happy to do that. This button down here that says template, I'll go ahead and click on this for you. If this is easier, this gives you a blank version with a whole lot of empty lines. And you are welcome to handwrite all this out, but it doesn't save doing this. You have to handwrite it every year. So that is, it's definitely an option. But if you um, would like to not have to rewrite all that information every year, then you are welcome uh, to use the, or then I encourage you rather to use the online version so that it saves and you just have to add to it all the time. Okay, so that is the involvement report. I hope that helps. And um, if you have any questions, please just reach out to us here at the Extension Office and we'll be happy to help you with those. Thank you. Have a great day.